got the right strain but still pulling mids, you are not alone. And today, I'm going to show you the science behind why even the best genetics fall flat if you don't have the right touch. Come on, but what we do. Today's video is brought to you by Real Growers Recharge. If you want stronger, healthier plants, if you want bigger roots for better fruits, you got to check out Real Growers Recharge. It's like an instant compost tea that holds more nutrients at your root zone, breaks those nutrients down, and makes them more plant available, getting more of your nutrients into your plants. Find out more about Recharge over at realgrowers.com. And while you're there, use coupon code SCOTTY420 to get 20% off your first order. Now let's get back to the show. Come on, high C. Let's get deep into this one. Okay, we just had the DGC Cup. Yeah. And we had a lot of people that brought the exact same strains, totally different looking flower. Yeah. And I was wondering if it comes from the same strain. It's sometimes even a clone from the same mother plant, but totally different results. What the heck is going on? You're going to roll your eyes if I say epigenetics. Oh, bro, are you going to turn this into a science class? I promise I'm not. That's what you're here for is to keep that from happening. Genetics, though. We always talk about genetics. I get that seed. I plant it. I've got the true sour diesel. Okay, that's just your recipe there. That's like having grandma's cookbook. That's what the genes are. That's what that DNA sequence is, whatever. That is the recipe, okay? So if I give you my grandma's sauce recipe and I give it to you and 10 other people, then we all meet up and compare. Do you think it's going to be the same? Probably not. Not even close, man. It says take tomatoes. It doesn't say crushed tomatoes, stewed tomatoes, peeled tomatoes. It says uh, put it on the stove on low heat. Doesn't say, you know, 110 degrees, 140 degrees. It's, there's a lot that's up for interpretation from the grower. It's the same thing when it comes to genetics. You've got that blank code, not the blank code, I guess it's an empty code. The DNA is just the code. And then all the stuff that we do to it, the, on to, the stuff we do on top of it, epi, epidermis, it means on top of, on top of the genetics is the epigenetics. That's all the stuff that's our environment, our uh, nutrients, uh, temperature, humidity, all that stuff. If I went and watered it once a day or four times a day, all that doesn't change the DNA code, but it turns certain genes on and off. I think there's 30,000 genes in a cannabis plant. It's a bunch of switches. You can either flip them on or leave them alone. I think they call it expressing or repressing them. Gotcha. Okay. Suppressing. So, maybe. I don't know. Repress, suppress. I don't know. Okay. So I've heard about like dominant and recessive genes. Sure. Some people, their parents might have this color of eyes and yeah. they come out with their grandparents' color of eyes. Is yep. it similar? Or is it I don't know if it's the exact same thing. But the way I think of it as, by the way, I just think of it in my head to make it ultra simple. I think of it as 30,000 switches that you can either switch on or leave off. And it's actually not even leaving them off, switching them off. And all that gives you different combinations. All that is your genetic expressions. And if you make the uh, plant cold, well, it can switch on some switches to make those anthocyanins, to make it, uh, to bring the purples out. Those are actually things that are produced. You know, it's actually chemicals that are produced. Yeah. So I guess what I'm thinking now is you got two twins. Sure. And one of them, they get separated at birth. One of them grows up in a village where there's not very much food, not a lot of nutrients. The other one gets grown up in a house where they got all of their nutritional needs. Even if they're identical twins, they're going to have different expressions as they grow up. So it's not what's hard coded at the beginning. It's what impacts the growth. Google it, man. Just Google identical twins. There's some I saw one. It was like 46 pairs of twins. The ones that smoked look a hell of a lot different than the ones that didn't smoke. Different. Your environment uh, has everything to do with it. It's flipping those switches on and off. Okay, so with that knowledge in mind, what are the things that I can control that will get the best expressions out of my plants? just about everything that we know you know what do we talk about environment that's why i'm always like environment is it more important than genetics you're never going to be able to get an expression that the that the dna doesn't have in it that the code doesn't have in it but it is huge man being able to flip those switches on or off makes all the difference between growing some crazy dank bud and growing something you know some mids and a lot of that has to do it by the way it's not all the same for every strain 
There's some strains where they go, hey, at the end, the last 10 days, turn the temperatures down, okay? It loves that kind of stress, and that will promote uh, this output. You know, the anthocyanins is what comes to mind with that. There's water stress. They talk about if you don't water it, big dryback periods, that it does something. It sends a message to the roots that, hey, man, we got to, it's a stressor. And it changes the way the roots behave. So all this stuff changes the way that the plants behave. It changes the plant's morphology, the way that it grows and looks. So all these little factors make a big difference when, you know, within the final, in the final bud, man. So the genetics is like the potential, but then the environment is what brings the potential out. Absolutely. Thinking of like a keyboard, you know, as a keyboard, it's got all sorts of combinations. You and it's just, you know, what, what 30,000 different combinations, 30,000 different genes. That's a lot of ways to express yourself, right? Okay, so you kind of threw me for a loop here. We've talked about like best practices and different lighting hacks and sure. different watering hacks. So you're saying that not all plants respond to those different methods. It's not like a blanket thing. Come on, they come from six different continents. If we're talking about cannabis, it comes from six different continents. So something that grows in Russia is not going to be similar to something that grows in Thailand. You know, they're going to have very different switches and very, even if it's the same switches, they're going to have very different expressions, phenotypical expression or uh, epigenetic expression, I guess, whatever you want to say, but depending on their environment. It makes sense. You can take the exact same genetics, whether it's grown in Thailand or Russia, and it's going to make a big difference, right? And by the way, I mentioned Russia because that's where autoflowers are from. Autoflowers, you know, they found them in the Earl Mountains of Russia, and that they adapted to completely different environment. Now, that's a genetic adaptation, but these plants are different, man. So whether it's with the UV light or cold stress, uh, environmental stresses, they're all meant to just flip these switches on and off and get specific genetic expressions. They call them phenotypical expressions, but it really is the epigenetic expressions. It's all those switches flipped on and off, man. It's cool. Hey, so as we're out of here, let me know. Have you ever experienced this? Have you ever grown the same strain and got totally different results? Or your buddy's grown the same strain with totally different results? I want to know about it. Come on, let me know in the comments. And if you dug this video, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Share this video with another grower you know. And check out the other couple of videos YouTube's recommending. We think you'll dig them.